time for a good old controversial video today and in this video I explain why I think the S10 is a better gas mask than the Scott GSR that replaced it in British Army service. So basically to give you some background, during most of the Cold War Britain used a mask called the S6 respirator. The S6 has some many good features, a couple of features that were, weren't great really. Um, for example how the eyepieces curved around on the mask meant that you had quite a sort of sickening, weird fisheye effect. It would actually been better if they put some sort of strut between the two bits of plastic and had the plastic at slightly different angles, but how they curved the plastic was a problem. So, the S6 was still an okay mask, actually fairly good, compared to what some other nations were using at the time. But, in the 1980s, Avon Rubber, which is the main supplier of gas mask release was to the British Army, came up with a much better design at that point. What they came up with was a mask that's known as the S10 in Britain. There's a couple of other names for it, I think for example AR10, SF10. There's slight variants as well, but the main original sort of purpose of the mask was to try and sell it to the British Army. And S10 is its name as in Service 10 or Service Respirator 10. Most masks in the British Army had an S number after World War II, or at least the prototypes did in between S6 and S10 even if they weren't issued, but to get on with the point of the video, the S10 is a very good mask. So, normally it wouldn't have the red eyepieces, I'll just take them off for the sake of this video. They're just outserts, but one of the other features of this mask is it can easily be fitted with outserts. So, the S10 is very simple in construction. The whole face piece is made of quite a rigid rubber, so it keeps the shape of the face, but still soft enough that it can bend uses a six point head harness with rubber straps not the most comfortable things in the world but once you've got them to your size you basically put the mask on, tighten the straps as much as you want them then you can stretch this rubber to take the mask on and off so you don't have to move the straps, they're kept in the right position for you by default the filter loads on the left side of the mask so it's good for right handed shooters what we have here is a voice diaphragm slash XL valve what we have here is a drinking tube lever that moves the position of the drinking tube in and outside of the mask and your normal exhale valve is under this plastic cover here I'll see if I can get off easily on the video oh, I dropped it but it's something a lot of people don't seem to know on the mask your actual exhale valve is here on the mask and you've got this sort of funnel and what that does is it sort of just trumpets your voice out a bit louder. The S10 as such doesn't have a purpose-built speech diaphragm, apart from that little thing there. What it mostly is, is a big exhale valve with a funnel to amplify your voice. I think it works fairly well. A lot of people complain that, you know, it could have had a proper voice diaphragm, but it was designed in the 80s. They weren't all that common on masks by that point, although they had obviously been done on several masks before then and what you got is clearly loud enough this bit here was designed so you could have a little clip on radio so if you were talking with the mask on people could hear you very clearly because they'd be hearing you through a headset not your actual you know, voice trying to shout at them from far away so anyway, I'll pop this back onto the mask where I got it off from just clips back on so as I said, as a drinking system I'm not a massive fan of drinking systems in masks but it was something that there was sort of a rush to put into masks during the 80s where they thought we can get one over on the Soviets by letting our soldiers drink while in combat with a gas mask on. So, as said, it takes a 40mm NATO filter on one side of the mask, normally the left side of the mask. Now, it's very lightweight, it's quite compact, you can fit, fit in a satchel of this size with a spare filter and all in all it's a very good mask so I'll just show you how you put it on what you literally do you can put this on very quickly as well and get a good seal is you put the mask over the top of your head like this with the straps on the back side then you simply pull the mask down and because I've already pre-adjusted the straps to this if I do this the mask makes an airtight seal so here we go the mask's comfortable enough just adjust that slightly. So I said you've got room for a filter in this bag. So what I'm just going to do now is get the filter out of the bag and put that on. It's the C2 filter, not the filter that was issued in the mask. There we go. So 
The S10 is lightweight and compact, very comfortable to wear. You know, you could wear this mask for quite a long time and have no real issues. You can make a good face tight seal in it without it really clamping down on your jaw like a lot of masks do. Vision range is very good. So, Britain used this mask from the mid-1980s when it was first introduced until probably five or so years ago, around 2010. At that point, Britain decided it needed a successor to this mask for some reason, rather than just having more of them. I don't particularly know why, because as I said, this is a very good mask. So, several masks were sort of introduced as like a trial, but they never really had a trial, which is part of the problem. So Avon Rubber, the maker of the S10, basically gave Britain two choices of what mask they could do, or almost three. They said, you can either have a mask called the FM12, which is an improved S10. As many people know, the FM12 is my favourite gas mask design ever. Although I have a CT12, which is one of its spin-offs. But what the FM12 was, was essentially an S10 that's lighter weight and sits closer to your face. So you can have smaller eyepieces and the mask is lighter, even lighter than an S10. And you can see just as well because the eye bits sit closer to your actual eye. There's less dead space in the mask, essentially. So, a very well designed mask. So that was one option. It was to basically keep a mask like the S10 everybody was familiar with, but just an improved S10. You're going to make the S10 lighter, more comfortable, everything else. Seems like a win-win scenario. The next option, I mean, they might have still said to them, we can keep making the S10 if you wanted that, but... However, the next option Avon presented was a mask that's called the M50, which is very famous. America has cleverly decided they're going to use it. Now, the M50 was Avon's sort of step up in gas mask design. They said, rather than having a 40mm mask, we're going to have masks where you can take the filters off and you can't inhale poisonous air because of its bayonet system. It's got the panoramic view visor rather than two eye holes. You know, and a lot of improvements. And they also said you can have that mask in the C50 configuration, which is to take 40mm filters rather than their proprietary filters. So you can have this mask in the 40mm system you already use, or you can have it with our new filter design that's quite clever, but there might be logistical problems with the filters, potentially. So Britain said, rather than have any of these sensible masks, what we are going to do is we're going to get an American company called Scott, and Scott do make good gas masks, don't get me wrong, I'm not really having a go at them for that. But they said, we're basically going to get Scott's copy of the M50, um, where they, you know, like what Pepsi is to Coke, you know, an example like that. And we're going to get them to make it, so it's not actually supporting British industry, and we're going to pay more for it. So there was probably a bribe there, I should imagine. Some nice lunches. So... What you have is a mask called the Scott GSR, which stands for General Service Respirator. And I will now demonstrate that to you, and then we'll compare both masks side by side, and we'll see which one's better. Because as you already know, I prefer this mask. But we will see why, you know, what they supposedly thought was better about the Scott GSR. Right, so here's the Scott GSR, and you'll immediately see this is a much, much bigger carry satchel. You know, an uncomfortably big carry satchel. Imagine that with all your other equipment. It's not the S10's... I'll just get them side by side for comparison. This is the S10's satchel. This is the Scott GSR's satchel. So, yeah, the Scott GSR, and this doesn't even have spare filters in here at the moment. You know, there's a lot more weight and bulk to this. It's a nice bag, don't get me wrong, but it's just massively big. You don't want to carry that with all your other equipment. So, okay, here we have the Scott GSR. So, you think, wow, that looks futuristic and modern. You've probably already noticed this is much bigger than the S10. It's heavier than the S10 as well. And it is general use for a soldier. You want to be keeping a soldier's equipment weight down so you can give them more ammunition and more of a certain supply. You don't, Especially because body armour obviously weighs a lot as well. You don't want to keep adding more and more weight to it. So, what's the Scots GSR sort of setup? So... The main thing about it is the filters, but I'll get onto that in a second. It has a panoramic lens, but one thing you'll notice is unlike the S10 where the uh, lenses are basically sealed into the mask with how it's constructed with bits clipping in and out, the Scott mask has been glued together and you can kind of see where the glue is. And supposedly sometimes these visors fall out, so when that happens to the gas attack, you're dead. 
But um, let's have a look at some of the other features of the mask before I start complaining about it too much. Six point head harness that can be tightened. And there are also two mask sizes to this. One, there's an inner mask that's not going to show up on camera. Uh, but there's an inner mask where I've got my thumb opening it up and the outer mask. And the idea is that you can have one size of one and one size of the other so you can get a better facial fit. What they did with the S10 is you have sizes very small to very large. And obviously you can get one that fits your face pretty damn well with having a very small to very large mask with adjustable straps. The Scott GSR, the issue is it also doesn't kind of really fit into the proper sizing thing as it should. Now to give you an example of that, the S10 um, you know is you get them with Britain and most NATO countries not all of them but most you have a sizing scheme that says a size 1 mask is large or very large and a size 4 mask is small or very small so most people go for a size 2 or 3 not a 1 and that S10 over there that I just showed you was a size 2 so for the most part I know I'm size 2 or NATO or size 3 generally not size 1 or size 4 the problem is the Scott GSR where they have both an inner and outer mask and you can have them say size separately it doesn't quite fit into conventional sizing so that's absolutely fine if you're measuring every soldier and issuing them properly but supposedly the masks weren't so the big issue I have with this mask is where there is the inner and outer mask especially this bit here is it's really uncomfortable for my chin because my chin here will go in between the two layers of the mask it doesn't compromise the seal but it makes it really uncomfortable because when I tighten the mask my chin is being crushed between two bits of rubber and like the plastic inserts that keep the bits in the right spaces so there's that again the mask has a drinking tube that's all good I guess you know same as an S10 I'm not a big fan of drinking tubes so I'm not going to really rate that as a feature it does have a proper voice diaphragm unlike the S10 if we take this plastic cover off here you'll see the actual voice diaphragm is here very similar to the American design ones and the exhale valve is here so there's that all pretty standard stuff but that's where it all is on the mask so I'll now try and get this cover back on which I probably won't manage very well so that's that. My main complaint is the filters. Now they do do a variant of this mask in 40mm now which would be a lot more sensible but I'll try and demonstrate my issue. Firstly these filters weigh quite a bit. Each of these filter weighs almost as much as a plastic 40mm filter of its sort of type. So it's like wearing two 40mm filters on the mask. So I'll get both the filters off. And they use this bayonet system where you have to pull this plastic catch here, twist the filter and then it comes off when it's at um, an angle to the mask. The idea supposedly is, is that you can twist the filter, still have it, you know, you can still breathe through the filter, but it at least means that you can shoot, you know, you can adjust the filter to be more sensible of shooting. I think they call these teardrop filters. So, as I said, you have this weird bayonet lug here. So, what you can see there is it has the bayonet setup rather than being a standard 40mm setup and the bayonet filter system is interesting because it means you can take one filter off when you need to change your filters breathe through the mask uh, through the other filter and it locks that one off so you can't inhale toxic gases or whatever then you can stick this filter on, connect it, stick the other filter on connecting it while wearing the mask it is much harder trying to position a little key bayonet thing like that to get the filters on than it is a 40mm so although they've got a system that improves it it's still not as good, I'd say, as just holding your breath and using a 40mm. Also, another thing I'll point out is this mask without a filter on weighs almost the same amount as an S10 with the filter on. And then you're adding the weight of two extra filters. Oh dear. So, that's the Scott GSR. I'd kind of like it if it was a bit lighter weight and took a 40mm filter just on one side. However, it doesn't. So... You've got this scenario where Britain's adopted the mask to replace the S10, but it's not really doing much that the S10 did. I suppose they can say it gives you better vision range and comfort. Lots more soldiers have reported issues looking through the iron sights or scopes of this compared to the S10. The S10 was simply better for that, and the S10 is not even a great mask for that anyway. Some of the optical masks, like the Soviet SHMS, 
is a much better mask for doing that. So, what can I say about this really? Yeah, it's okay, I suppose. I don't like the inner mask system. It sounds like a neat idea, but it just seems to cause more problems. You should have one, you should have a few different sizes of your gas mask all in one size, and then you get the closest one that fits somebody's face. That's a good idea. So now let's compare it side by side with an S10, and you'll see why I think the S10 is a superior mask. Okay, so here are both masks with the filters on at full weight. So as I said, the GSR weighs way more than the S10 does. Obviously, having two filters on it, you do get even weight to the mask. Also, apologies, this is apparently a size 3, not a size 2, but as I said, some NATO masks in size 3 are fine. This mask would be fine if it wasn't for having two masks, one inside the other. If they had one mask, my chin wouldn't make an issue with it. So, the straps on the GSR are ones I find you can't adjust to fit yourself and then, you know, just easily pull on and off. The rubber ones on the S10 allow you to do that. I find with the GSR, I put to basically have to take it on and off each time I want to do it. Also, supposedly there are more complaints that if you put the S, uh, GSR on too quickly, unlike the S10, you won't get a good facial fit and you'll have a really uncomfortable time where something inside will fold up and then it will be, you know, poking you constantly. The S10 doesn't really have that problem because it's a lot more simple. As said, the S10's lenses are fitted in a different way to the mask. They're basically clipped into a plastic frame where the GSR's sort of panoramic view visor has just been glued in. Again, apparently that can cause problems if the glues, you know, fall apart. I don't think masks like this are really all that good. You see, when Britain had the S10, that was a very good design. Then they switched to the CT12. It's like they should have switched the CT12 or um, FM12. That would have been a better design because it's just an improved S10. They didn't do that. There's also the Canadian C4, which is a very good mask of this type. There's the American M40, a very good mask of this type. There's the Forshida F2, another very good mask of this type. All are quite similar feature-wise to each other, but generally offer a comfortable fit, good vision range, clear speech and everything else. This is sort of a weird thing. It's like you said, what do we need a mask for? Well, the S10 ticks all, nearly all those boxes, and then we've gone for a mask that ticks less of the boxes. It's an improvement in some ways and a big throwback in many others. The filters on this, although they are proprietary ones, they are full sort of ABEC rated CBRN filters, so they stop pretty much every known chemical weapon and TIC, toxic industrial chemicals. If you get the right sort of filter for the S10, it would do the same job as well. But, as said, it's basically what do you want a mask for for your army this one is better for the job or an improved one would be better for the job we will go for this one instead which doesn't really fit the role so as I said it's, it's a nice looking mask it looks really sleek and futuristic but every time I put it on and try and do stuff with it I realize that I like the S10 more and specifically I like my CT12 more and, you know, I'm sure if I had an American M40 or a Canadian C4, I'd like those masks more. Because they're taking the 40mm filter concept that works really well, and taking them to the logical conclusion and making them a good mask. Not trying to reinvent the wheel, and being this sort of heavy, clumsy thing that doesn't really seem to do anything right. So, there you go. That's my in-depth thoughts on why the S10 is a much better mask than the Scott GSR.